Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles tonight, let's go to Romans chapter uh, Romans chapter 6, and you're, you're probably going to experience my, my passion in this tonight. It is, it is probably one of the most uh, misunderstood chapters that has really led us, uh, I don't think it would be out of line for me to say somewhat astray from what we need to, to look at. So we're going to there, there's a lot of things in here. Let me give you a little background, uh, first of all, uh, concerning Romans chapter 6. Um, and I'm going to be focusing in on this word sin, because if you, if you don't define it properly, it's gonna, you're going to misuse it every time. There's a difference between sin, the noun, person, place, or thing, and sin, the verb, sinning, an action uh, that, you, that you take place. And, and for most people, if you, when you don't know that, you will, you will automatically say this is sinning and you won't know it's talking about the old man. And it refers to the old man. And the scripture says that, I am finding out more and more today, that if you just, if you just know how to read, <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, I don't have to go to, if you just know how to read it, you know. It, this is the book that I, I've, I've, I've lived by, by, you know, for 40 years, 40, going on 41 years. And the um, thing about this book is that it, it has produced evidence in my life. And, and right now in my life, the thing I'm believing for more than anything is, is for that fruit of God's character to work itself from the inside out where I can begin to walk and benefit in that. But let's, let's look at this for a moment. Um, this word sin is used 48 times in the book of Romans. So you look at the entire book of Romans, it's used 48 times, that word sin. Now tonight we're going to look at Romans chapter 6, and in Romans chapter 6, uh, eight of those times is, it's used here. Well, eight, uh, eight, eight of those times is, it, it's used here. Uh, and only one time is it used as a verb in Romans chapter 6. One time, a verb. So the rest of the time, it's used as a noun. Now let me show you what the issue is here. The very first verse of Scripture says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now think for a moment. Most people read it like this, with this intention in their heart. What shall we say then? Shall we continue sinning? Action. Shall we continue sinning? And that word is not translated from the Greek to a verb form. It's a noun. And so the, the correct, and, and the scriptures will tell you as we keep reading, it's referring to the old man. It's referring to the, that body of sin. And so what he is saying is, um, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in the old man? Now, all of us, before we got born again, we had the old nature, the old man, the sin nature, the body of sin, all right? So when you got born again, that old nature, that old man passed away, and Jesus Praise God, thank God for Jesus, has granted us the new creation. The new man lives on the inside of us. The old man is gone, the new man is alive. The old man is dead, the new man is alive. You'll see these in the Scripture. The old man's gone away, he's passed away. That's what happened when you got born again. You got born again, you made Jesus the Lord of your life. The old man died, the new man lives, all right? And so that's what this word sin here in verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in the old man? All right, now remember, when you had the old man, uh, you sinned, the action, your sinning was because that's your nature. 
you had a nature to sin. And if you can remember before you got born again, there were certain things you didn't want to do, but you did anyway, and after you did it, you, don't, you, you kind of, why did I do that? I mean, I don't mean to cuss you out, but you made me mad because I cussed you out because <laughs> I had a nature to sin. I don't, and and here, here's the dangerous part. When you have the sin nature, ain't no telling how far you go sometime. Not even with good moral training. That'll help some until, the, until the, you get tipped off. You know, you, you meet the right one. <laughs> but when I got born again, I don't have to sin if I don't want to. Before, I didn't have that choice. Before, oh, come on. Before, before you got born again, you habitually sinned in some area. You either had an habitually bad attitude or you habitually did this or you did that. Or you, 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 go and check your life out before you got saved. Check out the stuff you hid in the booth in the back and in the corner and in the dark. That came forth from your old man, your sin nature, the nature to sin. When you got born again, that new creation came and gave you the potential and the ability to do from that new nature what you would have never done. Forgiveness is something that you consider all the time now that you're born again. It may not have been in consideration before you got born again. You were probably convinced, I'm just going gonna, gonna to hold something against you the rest of your life. And instead of forgiving, you were for selling. I'll forgive you if you do this. Well, it's got to be forgive, not for sale. And so, you know, I'm just asking you to just look at your, old, your, your life. I, Every time I look at the Bible and look at my life, wow, look at what I was. Oh, look at how crazy I was. Look at the stupid stuff I did. Now I'm born again, and even to have the thought of something like that brings conviction. To even think about that, I'm like, wow, I don't, I don't even want to think about that. Where does that come from? I got a new creation trying to work out of me the fruit of the Spirit. All right, so... First off, you got to understand, now that you are born again, you have a new creation. Say out loud, I have a new creation. I have a new creation. From the new creation flows a new character, the fruit of the Spirit, so forth and so on. All right, before you got born again, you had an old nature, the old man. From that old man comes all of the stuff of the flesh and the, and the disregarding God and all of those things that would build up wickedness and stuff in your life life. Now, I'm going to go through this because I want you to get the, I may, I may, I don't know, we may be on this for a couple of weeks because I want you to really get the, the fullness of this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to abide in the old man? Shall we continue to be governed by the old man, that old man of sin, so that grace may abound or grace may increase? Well, you know the answer is God forbid. No. You're not going to continue to submit yourself to the old man uh, so that grace can increase. But this is what got me, verse 2. How shall we? Stop right there. I'm like, why would you ask that? How shall we? How shall we what? How shall we continue in the old man? You're talking to me as if it's not possible anymore. Well, it's not if you're born again. How are you going to continue in something that has passed away? You're dead to the old man. How are you going to continue in the old man and he not there no more? You have a new creation on the inside of you right now. All right, now watch this. He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to that, that old man live any longer therein? We're dead to the old man. The word death, you first, we first look at it in... Um, Genesis chapter 1, uh, where, where he was, uh, no, well, Genesis 3, where he's dealing with Adam and Eve, and it says, the day you eat of this, this, the fruit of this tree, you shall surely die. It literally means separation, separation from God. There's going to be a separation spiritually. So we understand when we die, there's a separation of your spirit and soul from your body. Your body goes to the ground, turns to the dust, returns to the dust of the ground. Am I talking too fast? I mean, <laughs> the body goes to the, and then your spirit and soul is absent from the body. The Bible says absent from the body if you're born again and you're present with the Lord. So when you die, you're going to be absent from the physical body. And if you're born again, you're going to be present with the Lord. All right, this is going to be a big issue because at death, you're going to find out what you should have believed. I can't take that risk. 
I can't take that risk. That's when you're going to find out. Ain't no, ain't, listen, when, when you leave your body, ain't nobody going to be debating about stuff. It is what it is. And you better hope you got the truth. You better pray to God you got the truth. Amen? I, I, I remember having that in my head like, man. And I asked the Lord, I said, how do I know when I have the authentic truth? Because, I mean, I was, I was my, my family, I had AME, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Then I left there and went to the, the strong Baptist church. Then I went to a moderate Baptist church. And then I went to a church of God in Christ. My Aunt Jimmy was pastor there in church of God in Christ. That was when you had to go to the altar and, and uh, say Jesus until you talked in tongues. Jesus, 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 God, what? <laughs> and they wouldn't even let you off the altar until you prayed in tongues. Spit stuff everywhere. Just crazy. Your mouth all foam. It was the nastiest thing. But then you got, they say you got the Holy Ghost. And I said, I got to, I got to know this truth because I can't do this. I'm doing everything. And check what happened. I, I, I heard the Lord say, he says, well, uh, if I gave you a recipe and you went in the kitchen, how would you know if it was a real recipe for a particular thing unless you go cook? Okay. What does that got to do with the Word? He says same thing. Take the Word, take it in your life, cook, and it produces what it says will produce. I took certain things that I was doing before, it wasn't producing. But when I got into this Word and started doing it, that's how our church started. Our church started like this. Come to church, I'm going to teach you how to do it, go home and do it, and then come back and tell us about it. Eight people, here's the word, go do it, then come back and tell us about it. You know what happened? They went home, they did it, it worked, they came back and told us about it. Then somebody else said, I'm going to go do it too, and they came back and they told us about it. That's, you're not, that's how world changing got started, and all you're getting, get understanding. And they went home, and they did it, and they came back, and they told us about it. And folks feel, well, it does it work for every area of life? Everything that pertains to life and godliness is in this Bible. Take it home, put it in your life, uh, pr produce it in your kitchen, come back and tell us about it. Because to me, if you can't come back and tell us about it, then there's something wrong with this Bible. And I found out God said, ain't nothing wrong with the Bible. It's something wrong with you. He said, you're trying to change the Word to get it to meet your need. He said, that's not how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to allow the Word to change your thinking. Now, with all that, you see what I'm saying? I have to go over this three, four more times. I want you to get a hold of this. But look what he's saying here. I'm like, I, I'm reading this, and it just, it was a matter of understanding that this is the noun and not a verb. Shall we continue in this old man, this sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead or separated to this old man? How are we going to live long, uh, any longer therein when, we, when, 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 when we, we, he's passed away? He no longer has that same position in our lives. Know you not that so many of us, as were baptized, bapto or baptism into Christ, totally immersed, were baptized into his death. So if I'm baptized into Christ, I'm also baptized in his death. What part of us died when we got born again? That old man. Now watch what the scripture does. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. What? that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Christ was raised from the dead, so when you got born again and you died to that old man, he says like Christ was raised from the dead, you're going to walk in the newness of life. All right, now watch this. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. In what way? Now look at verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man, underline old man, is crucified with him. Secondly, that the body of sin, underline body of sin, might be destroyed. Third, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Right, let me show you what he's saying there. Because before I read it like this, knowing that our old man is crucified with him and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not 
uh, continue to sin or we should not continue to, to serve sinning. That's not what he said. Watch this. Knowing this, that our old man, the old man is crucified, the body of sin is destroyed, so we should not have to serve the old man and the body of sin. That's what he called. When he says sin here, he's referring to the old man. When he says sin here, he's referring to the body of sin. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to bring a board out here and teach grammar. <laughs> Look at this sentence structure. Knowing this, that our old man's crucified, body of sin is destroyed, so we don't have to serve, we don't have to serve the old man or the body of sin. The word sin here in verse 6 is a noun. It is a noun. It is the old man. It is the body, of, uh, the body of sin. He's not talking about sin action. He's talking about the sin man, the old man, the, 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 the man of sin that, that, that died when you got born again. You don't have to serve him anymore. Why? You're separated from him. The power of God's grace is he separated you from that old man. You don't have to serve the dictates of the old man. When that old man is trying to get you to do something, you can, you can resist and say, no. Wow. Sin, old man, noun, not verb. Watch this. For he that is dead to sin, you see the reference here, is freed from sin. If you're dead to it, and both times, look at this, he that is dead to the sin man is freed from the sin man. How did we read it before? For he that is dead is freed from sinning. Okay, what's the problem if, if you're sitting up here thinking, well, uh, I'm telling you you're free, you're free from, the, from, the, from the old man. You keep making reference to the action of sin. All right. How many of you have accomplished being flawless since you got born again? No mistakes, you ain't missed the mark at all. To, to sin, sinning means missing the mark. Is there anybody in here who, who, who say, I've not missed the mark since I've been born again? You raise your hands up, I'm going to cast that lying devil out of you. You lying. <laughs> See, that's, that's the whole deal. How inaccurate this would be to say that you are free from sinning. I know you don't like to say it because your tradition in church tells you all these little nice things. Sin has no measure. Bad attitude is just as bad as murdering somebody. Jesus made that comparison. Jesus talked about, you know, you know, uh, if you hate your brother, you've committed murder. Jesus made it almost impossible. So here's the deal. It's like he's committed to make sure that you're perfect even when he shows up. He's going to make sure that the work is complete in your life. So if I'm not free from the actions of sinning, now, listen, you're not going to sin more under grace. You're going to sin less and less. But I still got this human side of me that wants, it, that'll miss the mark. I, I know what love is, but I may not love perfectly all the time. But I'm striving, and I'm getting better, and I'm better now than I was last, yesterday or last week. And that's what it's about. We're, we're, we're maturing. We're, it, we're, we're being perfected, and we're maturing you see, along the way. But nobody has reached the point where you are flawless and holy. And I don't care how many times you come to church. You haven't reached that point. But so what he's saying is, what are you free from? You're free from the nature of sin. You no longer have, I need to explain this nature. You no longer have the nature to sin. Uh, Lord, bring back that illustration as you used years ago. The horse and the mule. You can take a mule and you can feed him like a racehorse, treat him like a racehorse, brush him like a racehorse. But as soon as you put him behind, you know those race things before they let it up, for the, and they hit the gun, he's going to do what his nature is. He doesn't have the nature to be a racehorse. So when the slacks come up, he's just going to stay there. Where the food at? <laughs> if you do have a pig as a pet, I can't imagine in Georgia you would have a pig as a pet. 
you can have a pig as a pet. You can take that, pe <laughs> you can take that pig to PetSmart. You can get that pig washed and groomed and spraying good. And as soon as you get back home, his nature is going to take over. And his nature determines his action. I've got a, a, a Caucasian shepherd, big dog, number one, well, you know, I guess it differs, but he's the top protection dog in the world. And he loves, his job is he works at night, he sleeps in the daytime. That's our understanding. He works at night, sleeps in the daytime. It was cold this past week. When I do this, he's supposed to come in the garage. I did this. The older they get, they get stubborn because they want to check. They want to test you out to see if they can take back the control. And so I had to walk all the way out there in the woods to get him. So I locked him up in jail for three days. And in jail, we trained. And until you do that perfectly, you ain't getting that. We train because he wants to see if he can dominate me. But he's an awesome dog. But when I take him to get it, he get cleaned up, he, he looks like a show dog, just the nicest thing ever. And I have to bring him in the house because his nature is going to take over as soon as I let him out. So if I want to try to act like he's a house dog, I got to do it within 48 hours. <laughs> no, not 48 hours, two. Because you know the money you spend on the groom and all that, brush your teeth, do all that kind of stuff? That can get kind of expensive. And God, dog, you let this dog out, the first thing he do, he get in the grass and he turn it all the way over, he coming back, paws all black, where you been? <laughs> Says, man, I'm a dog. I'm a dog, and I, t I get so tickled when I see people dress their little dog up and put these things on. I say, he say, I'm a dog. Don't, don't treat me like you. I'm a dog. <laughs> That's his nature. Well, you might not, you, 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 you didn't say that before, but when you were a sinner and you had the sin nature, look, go back and have a reflection. No, don't go back. I don't even want you to look at some of the stuff you used to do. <laughs> but some of the stuff you used to do, your nature took over and how your nature tra tra trained you. But now that you got born again, you have a new nation in nature. You have a new creation. And that's what God's trying to get you convinced of. That's not you no more. So what has to happen is you got to renew your mind to the new nature. Because the old nature has trained, uh, Lord, has, has the old nature wrote the software for how you used to act. So when you get born again, the software is still there. You got a new nature, but the software is still there from the old nature. Mm. So the new nature comes in, you got the new creation, and you're still doing what you used to do when you had the old nature on the inside of you. And the reason why that's happening is because you don't renew your mind. And every problem everybody has, somebody says, just get born again, it'll be all right. Just get born again, it'll be all right. Just, and, and, and I see people get born again, and it, nothing changed. Because they thought just getting born again was going to change everything. Just getting born again changes one thing. It changes the old man and replaces it with the new creation. If you want to see change in your life, you got to renew your mind with the Word of God so it can line up with the new nature, the new creation. And so now you have the new creation, you got a renewed mind, and when you take the renewed mind and the new creation, it'll make your body do what it's supposed to do. Uh, all right, let me go over that again. Make sure you got it. Have you ever met people who had issues? <laughs> All kinds of issues. I don't want to pick one because I don't feel like fussing with these people online. Uh, <laughs> pick an issue. All right, folks got issues, right? And we all grew up thinking the answer is get born again. You know, your husband's acting that way because he just needs to get born again. Well, I'm tired of men cussing me out. I'm telling you, you got one more time to cuss me out. And what you going to do? Well, I'm a, I got a gun. I'm like, you need to get born again too. <laughs> but what I've realized is getting born again the only part of you that got saved when you got born again was your spirit. Your body didn't get born again. Your soul didn't get born again. Your mind 
When I say soul, I'm talking about your mind, will, and emotions. Most people use the word soul interchangeably as if it's the same thing. You, 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 you are a spirit, you possess a soul, you live in a body. You are a spirit, say, I am a spirit. I, am a spirit. I possess a soul. Possess now, what's the soul? The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. The soul is your thinker, your, your, your chooser, okay, your believer. That's where your soul is. Well, when I die, what's going to go? Your spirit and soul. That's how you're going to know me, and I'm going to know you, because your spirit and soul are going to leave your body. Your body's going to return to the, to the dust of the ground. It's just the, the anatomy that I'm trying to get you to, to see here. So we say, get born again, all problems are over with. That's not true. When I got born again, the day I got born again, I was cussing like nothing happened. And I'm like, whoa, I just knew maybe I shouldn't be talking the same way <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I got saved today. You know, most people just completely left God and left the church because they said that didn't work. That didn't work at all. But here's the part we miss. Here's this person struggling with this life or doing this, and we never told them. Well, here, two things. Number one, they got born again, and nobody discipled them. It was almost like, you had a baby, and you, you, you went and told everybody, I had a baby, I had a baby, I had a baby. Where is he? Well, I don't know. Well, who's going to take care of the baby? Who's going to nurse the baby? Who going to... That's the problem we have in the body of Christ. People are getting saved, but they're not getting discipled. They're not getting discipled. All right, now watch this. So you get born again, you're not discipled, and watch this, you have no idea that the most important thing to do after you get born again is to renew your mind. That's the most important thing, renewing the mind, the most important thing. The Bible says that here's how you prove change, through the renewing of your mind. So what do you renew your mind with? With the Word of God. Now, I can't imagine what it has been like for people who want to renew their mind to be a part of a church and the Bible's not being taught. I'm a, I'm a stickler. Listen, I teach the Bible. I can't help you with nothing else. I teach the Bible. The Bible says be renewed with the Bible. And I promise you, I teach the Bible, you hear the Bible, I renew my mind with the Bible. I, I don't believe in I renewed my mind. I believe in I'm continuously renewing my mind with the Word of God. I ain't got there yet. I'm still renewing my mind. I'm still discovering. Uh, Taff and I were having a conversation the other day, and, and we, were, we were talking about, you know, uh, I said, Taffy, God just spoke to me. He said, he said, change how you use love and say it's not enough. And she said, what? I said, let me give you, I said, I remember us having this conversation. We said this, we said, love's not enough. And, and God said, change that. I said, why? He says, you're talking about me. And he spoke to me, he says, no, what's not enough is commitment is not enough. What's not enough is, is, is sex is not enough in marriage. All, all those other things that are not enough, but not love. Because when love is defined in the fullness of its definition, it satisfies. So whatever is not encompassed in love is not enough. Not love. And Tap said, what you talking about? I, I, said, I said, the only way I can explain this, baby, is just the Bible says God is love. And we're saying love's not enough. Love's not enough. And then we say love's not enough. You got to do this, this, this. Well, this, this, this is what's not enough. <laughs> well, we, we need to communicate more. No, your communication is not enough. All right? Your commitment is not enough. All right? Your sex is not enough. All right? But when, when all of that comes up to the level it's supposed to be on, Love's going to be enough because it encompasses all of what's missing. Does that, y'all I must be in my own little world right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm, t I'm talking to y'all, y'all looking at me like. <laughs> I know I got this 45 minutes, so I'm, maybe I'm trying to get too much out at the same time, but it's like, love is not only enough, it's more than enough when it is comprehended properly. But with a worldly comprehension, your comprehension is not enough. The, the Bible says that love is so, so, so enough, it is so deep, so wide, 
if you can comprehend it, he says, and you probably won't. So I'm the one that's probably not getting all that it is. But he said, work that out of your vocabulary. I said, oh, God. And so I'm still being trained. Work that out of your vocabulary. Well, you know, love's not enough. You know, you got to talk to me when I need you to talk to me. Love's not enough. You got to, you got to, you know, you got to romance me. Love not. See, no, 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 no. I'm not talking to you enough. I'm not romancing you enough. That's what's not enough. I was telling Bishop when he came in back and I was like, I said, I, I said I'm freaking out, uh, Bishop, over this comment. I'm just fed up with hearing this comment. You know, hey, man, you, well, I haven't seen you in church in a while. Well, I got a problem with the grace message. Oh. Oh, so right there, when I just, I just wrote, I'm going to teach this series. The number one problem with the grace message, number one, is ignorance. You don't even know enough to have a problem with the grace message. <laughs> I'm, I apologize, y'all. I'm not trying to be, like, rough enough. But you, it's like... Think about it. When somebody tells you they have a problem with the grace message, and if you sit down and talk to them, they don't even have enough information. They don't even have enough knowledge. They're too ignorant to even possess a problem. <laughs> I got a problem with the grace message. It's, it's the only gospel that should be preached. Did you see Galatians? Galatians says... Paul was talking in Galatians 1. He says, if you preach any other gospel except the one that I preach, he said, if you are an angel, preach any other gospel. He said, even me, let them be accursed. And then he turned around and said the same thing again. Preach any other gospel except this one. Let them be accursed. And we're preaching the gospel of performance, and we're preaching the gospel of, of, of works, and we're preaching, you know, what everybody else been doing all their lives. And he says, you, you, you're just not going to be empowered to have success because you're in the wrong lane. Amen. And the number one lane that needs to be addressed is ignorance. And I have, listen, you know how long I've been chipping at this? The message of Jesus Christ, which is what it is, the message of grace, you getting cold in here. The message, maybe I cut my hair too low or something like that. Huh? I want a blanket. Yeah, somebody moving, we good now. All right. I want to sweat sometime. Uh, <laughs> help me what I was saying. Okay, the message of grace, which is the message of Jesus, it's like an onion. You peel it. It has layers, you know what I'm saying? After layers, last time you peeled the onion, after layers, after layers. And I wish I could peel the whole onion in a sitting. But so far, it's taken over 10 years to try to just peel the onion, and I hadn't gotten to the core yet. And before I can get to the core of the message of grace, somebody's screaming, I got a problem with the grace message. That's why you have to trust the pastor that God led you to. You see, I don't understand what he's talking about right now, but I trust him. I done been there with him before. I know he hear from God. I know he in the Word. I'm going to let him go and peel this thing through. And then one day, I'll, 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 I'll be all right and do what I need to do. But some people, as if you are smarter than God, Hop up, you got your, 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 <laughs> your ignorance. I was going to say your ignorant self, but that ain't nice. Your ignorance. And here's the second, the number two issue. You got a problem with God? What's the second issue? Your tradition. Your ignorance and your tradition. I came from a very traditional background, Methodist church, Baptist church, and I don't know why we did the stuff we did. I have no idea. You remember that little decalogue thing you used to play on the piano at the Big Kenny? You know, glory be to the Father and the Son and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. Nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to be, nearer my God to be, nearer to me. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to know why. 
I promise you, when Jesus comes back, he's going to examine the church, and he's going to say, he's going to ask the same question. Why? What are y'all doing? Where is that? In, where, where, who, who did that? Who did that? There were no buildings. There, was no, there were no ushers. The stuff was, it was just Jesus. Walking around, talking to people about him and how they needed to believe him. And here's another thing. Most of the churches in the book of Acts were in homes. Watch this. You can check it out yourself. Pastored by women. I don't know where this thing came from. Women pastored those home churches in the book of Acts where they were going through. Some of the names in there, you thought they were men. Those are women they were talking to. I let Taffa handle that. <laughs> but I'm a historian by nature, so somebody said the Bible wasn't enough. But I remember teaching, uh, what history was that? Anyway, I was teaching history, and then we were looking at, you know, we were trying to figure out how to determine when something is authentic and when it is not. And I went to Rome. And, you know, I went to where Paul was before they uh, executed him. And it was a hole, just like, the, just like the Bible said. How they fed him from the top, just like the Bible said. What he died of, they still had the sign posted up of who, what time the, each person was going to be executed, just like the Bible said. I had a chance to walk through the, 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 the ruins that were at this top of the mountain in, in Greece, in Athens. Just like the Bible, there it is. I said, oh, so Paul took his cell in that body of water right there. Just like it said. I'm not just preaching stuff. I know what I'm talking about because I've been cooking this stuff in this kitchen for 40, 41 years. This thing's been coming out the, the way it's supposed to come out. And when it's not working that same way, I already know what to do. I judge myself, I look at myself, I'm, oh, I see what's wrong. I'm complaining too much. And unless the grace of God come in, I need to, I need to deal with my complaining. Not that my complaining is going to allow God to be more powerful because God, God has done things for me when I was complaining. But what grace does, it, you start loving Jesus so much you don't want to you don't want to complain because the new nature in you is, is bearing fruit of what fruit? The fruit of Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is coming out. That's what's happening. The reason why you don't want to do those things anymore because that was a part of the old man and you're renewing your mind in the Word of God and your mind is now being renewed and now you can work with that new creation on the inside of you and next thing you know, your body is receiving the, the signals of, from the new software. Glory to God. The, the, whole, the, the, the new creation was given to help you to write a new software and, and you can, you, you make your body line up with your spirit and you make your body line up with your renewed mind. I've seen it happen in my life. I am not what I used to be. And I can't say, I don't know what happened. I know exactly, thank God, I know exactly what happened. That I am free, I have been freed from the old man. I am now alive to the new creation. And with the word of God, I can renew my mind. I've seen too much. I've seen people get, get up from the dead. I've seen people instantly healed. I've seen so much of God's power over these times. Things that cannot be not. Some of the stuff I got on tape, I told them to go dig the tapes up, pull up all this stuff. I pray for people who would who were crunched up and they were supposed to die and I got pictures. And I'm thinking like, I know there are weird people and charlatans and all this kind of stuff, but I'm telling you what I know. God is real. I'm telling you what I know. And he'll change your life. If you'll let this word get in you, and let this word change your thinking. You're not going to, I'm not going to change. My job is not to change the word. My job is a lot of word to change my thinking. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. I'm a new creation in Christ.
I'm, I'm, I'm new. You're new. You got God working in you. I thought about that. I'm like, I don't know if, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever been a part of a church that was honest enough to say that, that missing the mark still exists. I even have to say missing the mark because you can't hardly handle you still sin. <laughs> now, listen, you're not sinning the way you used to because you're not under that same dude. But if you, you know, I don't do the Big Ten. Bravo. <laughs> but you do, you do the brand new five. Bad attitude. Shoot your bird if you jump in front of me in the thing. I'm tired. I'm complaining. I had to realize, man, my complaining was just as much as sin than any sin I'd ever done in my life. But what happens when the Holy Spirit is in you, he takes something that you didn't even look at as sin when you first got saved, and now it becomes a big deal. Why? Because you're being transformed into the image of God. You're, the fruit of the Spirit is coming out of you, man, and you just, you just want to love him. You, you don't want to be in fear. You don't, you don't want to value other things more than him. Those are the desires that he's planning on the inside of you. It's all right if I talk to you tonight. I, I, got the, I can't, I, you know, you got that, all that reading right there. You read, read Romans 6. That's your homework when you go home. Read Romans 6. <laughs> and we're going to try to go through it line by line, but I couldn't even make 6. In this series, we're going to talk about New Testament obedience. And I'm going to show you in Hebrews chapter 3 when it says, you know, they who were disobedient enter not in. And then it said they enter not in because of their unbelief. Whoa, there it is. Unbelief is disobedience. And with dealing with Israel, belief is obedience. So if you're obeying the, 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 the New Testament and obeying and believing the New Testament, you're walking in obedience. But in Romans 6, it talks about obe obedience. It uses the word obey. And it's talking, of, and, it, and it's using obey as give your attention to. And it says if you give your attention to the wrong doctrine, and it tells you what's going to happen. And if you give your attention to the right doctrine, then it tells you what's going to happen. And he says your destiny, your destiny is life, is based on who you give your attention to. If you're going to give your attention to, to Adam under sin, I, I think it says, or you're going to give your attention to, to, to Christ under righteousness. Who gets your attention? What doctrine gets your attention? You're going to see that when you read Romans chapter 6. I just said it, and then you're going to go read it. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> but when I saw that angel in Sacramento, I knew that'd get your attention. Yeah, I did. Well, I don't believe it. Oh, okay, if you don't believe it, I know what I saw. <laughs> Minister Ken saw it too, though. That was supposed to be the last day on, my, on the planet, 21 years ago. 21 years ago, I was on my way to preach in Sacramento, California. Me and some friends of mine, we were in there, we were doing a meeting. And this lady ran this, uh, her son, I, don't know, I think she, she, she died. Yeah, I think she died. And uh, her son, who, whoever was driving, ran the red light, and we were in a Suburban. And it hit the Suburban from under, but it hit it with such impact, it knocked the tires off the wheel. And the Suburban went up. I got, I got pictures of this and everything. You know, I, some of you have seen those pictures before. And the Suburban went airborne. And it, and it started doing, I mean, it hit like a bomb went off. And, and the thing looks like a bomb. It was a brand new Suburban. When it hit, and I, and I felt myself going like this, I said, let me keep my eyes open. I, I, I thought, well, this is it. Let me keep my eyes open. I wanted to see the transition. <laughs> And it, um, I want to see the transgression. I said to myself, I want to see how close I got to, to I know I'm going to need some, some kind of adjustment when I get there, but I want to see, see this. And I, I kept my eyes open, and I was going over, and I kept my eyes open, and then this one time I went over, that's when my eyes passed two angels. Somebody says, what color were they? Their clothes and their skin were the same. It was light. Uh, and they had facial like, I saw the eyes, they had facial features, but the face and the clothes were 
it was, I, I want to say a white light, but it was just, it was light. And, and they were moving. And they, they went right across my face. Came across, and then when they came across, it kind of blinded my eyes open, and now I was, I, I, I was somewhere else. Uh, and there were a group of people coming towards me, uh, but they were out of focus. You, you follow me? And I was moving towards them, and I don't know if I was walking or they were walking, but we were coming close together. Then a voice came in between me and those people, just as it looked like the focus was getting ready to clear up. And it said, no! And you could see the voice. The, it was like force. No, too much unfinished business. They went that way. I went that way. And I was hanging upside down like, what just happened? And what just happened? And then I said, too much unfinished business. What, what do you mean, there's more? At that time, I'm like, ah, I cannot do this. 80 meetings a day, Lord, more? What else? And I'm like, and I jumped out the car. My phone was ringing. It was, it was Bishop McClendon. Hey, what just happened? Uh, I don't know. I'll call you back. <laughs> then, you know, there were people in the car, and we were trying to get them out. And, and then I looked, and I'm like, where's Ken? Uh, I'm, I'm like, Wait, wait, where's Ken? Where is Ken? He ain't in the car. And then there's, you know, the side of the, the window on the side of the bourbon? There's a hole through that. He was about, oh, I'd say 50, 60 yards away from the car. And he had landed in the front windshield of the car of the woman, she was driving this car. He landed in there and her, his head was on her lap. Can you imagine? Sitting at an intersection and a flying man comes through your windshield, which is normally decapitation, which is what I thought happened because when I saw him, his collar was all red. I'm thinking, oh, my. His legs were hanging on the side and body was inside. And I'm, I'm like, no, no. I stopped, called Taffy. She said, what's, what's up? I was like, I was trying to talk. I said, Ken, Ken and and. and and wreck and just words. And she said, hold up a minute. She said, there will be no death here today. She said, say it. I said, there'll be no death. She said, say it. Man, that woman. <laughs> I said, there'll be no death here today. There will be no death here today. I said, there'll be no death here today. And the fireman passed me. He said, did you come out of that car? I said, yeah. He said, Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know. They didn't call the ambulance. They just called somebody to pick up all their dead bodies. And uh, I called him, Ken. He said, Crap. I said, Ken. He said, Crap. I said, Ken. He says, I'm fine. And I'm like, Oh, that's he fine. Whenever you do, I'm fine. He's fine. <laughs> we went to the you know, I got in the back of the ambulance with him. I'm, I'm, I've got adrenaline all over the place. I'm, I'm just, they were trying to open the door. They, they, and I, they said I came up, just jerked the thing open and stuff like that, and they kind of looked again, you know. And I, when I got to the hospital, everybody was in and doing what they need to do. I fell against the wall. Next thing you know, I, I was in a hospital bed. I said, what happened? He said, your adrenaline was up high. And I said, well, wait a minute, where, where's Ken? And I went to him, and I said, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I saw something. I got to tell you something. He said, those angels? I said, what were you talking about? He said, those, those angels? I saw them too. I said, oh, Lord, God has sent his angels to rescue us. God has sent his angels to preserve us. <laughs> Everything looked different after that. I had, I had touch come right that close to death, and God, God preserved my life. I, I went back to the room, showered up, got the... The glass, I didn't have no, nothing bleeding except when I landed from the seat and my hands hit the glass and my knees and stuff. Somebody said, well, certainly you chilled out. I said, no, nah. I checked myself out. I said, I got to go preach. I said, what? I said, well, the meeting starts at 7 o'clock. I got a couple of hours to get ready. I got to go preach. Well, why would you want to do that? Because it's obviously something getting ready to happen. 
if you're going to try to kill me to stop me from getting there? So I put my clothes on, pulled up in the, uh, in the parking lot, parking lot full of media. And they had to get it out because the word out, uh, Dollar and died. He died in a car accident on the West Coast. You know how folks are. Dollar ain't dead. I'm walking up the church, oh, I thought you were dead. Ah, I'm like, what, well, I ain't dead? They, you know, we did a few interviews, and then I, I got out and sat up in the chair, and I started preaching. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, uh, he'll not ever come that close to your life again. You just needed to know I got you. And you were not wasting your time when you said, and we said this before we got in the car, for with long life will he satisfy us, and he'll show us his salvation. You understand? I got Psalms 91 equipped before I got in that car. I went in the kitchen and I cooked before I got in that car. And before I got home, before I got home, the recipe was proven. It's just like the recipe read. With long life, I'll satisfy you. And I'll show you great salvation. All right, I've, my time's up. I, I don't know if you got anything out of tonight. Um, So, I'm, uh, I won't keep preaching this grace. The Lord let me live a another 60 years. I'm, I'm going to keep studying it, and I'm going to keep preaching it, and I'm going to keep studying it, and I'm going to keep preaching it, and I'm going to keep praying and asking, and I'm going to keep studying it, and I'm going to keep preaching it. And I preach it in some places that, you know, I have some hecklers in there. Oh, yeah, they, they open their mouth. This is heresy! And I wanted to get back with them because that, the, that was a college part in nature. I want to, you know... Your mama the heritage? You know what you're talking about, heresy? <laughs> See, I, I, I ain't get back with him. I left, I left him alone. I left him alone. I, I wanted to. I just to be honest with you, I wanted to get back with him. Like, what? You bad? Come on down here, bro. Uh-uh. Because I'm learning that grace people must be gracious people. I can't preach the message of grace and not be gracious. God, help me to be gracious. Help me to be loving and kind. So I guess uh, the Lord had his way here tonight. I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm not going to stop preaching it. So if you want to go to another church and you want to hear something about Daniel and the Lions Den, help yourself. <laughs> I'm not leaving this. That other stuff almost took me out. That religion almost tore my life to pieces. If I would have stayed in religion, I would be divorced, probably out of the ministry, probably smoking weed now, <laughs> broke, or just blow my brains out. That stuff wasn't working. I tried it so hard. I tried it. And when I tried it and I'd fast for days and I'd, I'd go out of town and just fast, don't eat nothing. Come back and lay hands on folks, they still died. Put the little Jewish scarf on, anoint myself with oil, do it, and it, it wasn't working. I said, something ain't right, something missing. I said, Lord, I've done good works. I've done this, and I've done that, and I've done that, and I've done that. And I heard it real clear, and that's why I hadn't been able to do anything since. You've been in the way. Somehow you thought you got smarter than me and I can't tell you nothing. And you depended more on you and you got in the gospel of performance and you didn't depend on me. When you first started, it was just me. People say, how you do this? You say, I don't know. I just pray and obey. Now you ready to give seminars on how you made that happen. I'm free. So I'm free from the sin nature. Uh, I, I, I'm free from being uh, 
motivated by the nature to sin. Well, why do people say, what's stronger than that motivation and that nature to sin? What's stronger than that old man? Your free moral agency, your decision. You now sin because you decided to. But you can also decide not to. And that's the key to this. You sin today because you decide to. Talking about you slipped up and cussed somebody out. You had a quick thought, made your mind up, voted, and declared, I'm finna cuss you out. <laughs> you made a decision to sin. This is not magic. You make a decision to sin, and that's the strongest thing you possess as a human, a choice. And I just choose not to. And certain things I just choose not to do. Just choose not to. If I don't think me coming over my boundaries is going to benefit me and other people, I just choose not to. Man, it's just going to be just fine. I feel like I'm a soldier preparing for a war. The devil's not going to win this battle. I need y'all to enlist in the army of God and help me get this grace message around this world. They coming. I've, I've had people call and apologize to me. Preachers, I just want you to forgive me. I didn't know what you was preaching, and I kept listening, and I got it, and I just want, I just, I just, um, I, I mean, time after time again. I've had famous people come up to me and crying. I will not eat from your table for the rest of my life. I'm like, you know, whatever, you know, just make sure you're eating the right food. You ain't got to eat at my table. I don't know if I got room for, at my table for you. Amen. Well, I done talked enough. Whoever's supposed to come up here and finish this, you can go ahead. You're going to have to do all of it. Just come on up here and do what you got to do. I love y'all so, so very much. I'm looking forward to life together. I'm looking forward to all of us going to heaven together. Man, I'm telling you, it's going to be a time. It's going to be a time. It's going to be a time. Amen. <laughs> Praise God.